Look, that guy's watching a video. Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for another Ham Shack Chat. This video will guide you through the initial settings of the log for om 2 QSO logging program. This is an introductory video, but more videos will be coming shortly that will discuss the many intricacies and features that this powerful and free it's here, it's free program offers. Instead of trying to tell you everything about the software, I'll be breaking it down into shorter, more digestible segments. As always, if you have any questions, observations, suggestions, or just general remarks, please leave them in the comments. No trolling, okay? That said, it's time to head over to the log for om 2 download page. Most of you are already familiar with downloading software and I don't want to insult your intelligence. However, I am going to be offering a few tidbits along the way. If you feel like you don't need this section, use the chapters in the video description to skip ahead. We're going to start by going to this website right here. You can do a Google search for log for om and drill down to it or you can follow the link in the video description or you can just type this into your browser. Once you're here, right on the top, you're going to notice a donate section. And this is right under the section where it tells you log for om is free. You do not have to donate anything to make this work. And there will be no difference in how log for om works for you, donation or not. Over here, there's also a link to their forum where you can ask your questions and stuff like that. Now, let's move down the page a bit where you'll see the log for om user manual. I encourage you to download the manual and save it on your computer someplace that you'll remember. I'm not going to go into the manual except to say that it is very comprehensive, easy to navigate, well written, and will probably be my primary source for research with log 4 om well, Perhaps a future video will give a tour of this manual. Back up to the top and you'll see that we have a beta release and a stable release which is recommended. You also have previous versions if you want to backdate your release. Under each one of these you'll see the version number and the release date. So the stable version came out on March 20th and the beta release came out on March 24th. log for om is known for having an aggressive release schedule so I'd recommend checking back here periodically to see if you need to do an update. You'll also see that each release comes in two flavors what I will call the main release and a portable version. From my understanding, and I could be wrong, the portable version can be loaded onto a memory stick and carried with you if you'll be working on another computer. And that use may be explored in a future video. For now, we're going to download the main version. I'm going to click here, and the main version is going to start. Our program has been downloaded, and the zip file is in my download. And you can get to the downloads by clicking on this up caret and say show in folder and there it is. You can also just go to your downloads folder this way. You can open up the application by either double clicking or going to extract all. So I'm going to say extract all and I'm just going to use the default folder which is my downloads folder and you'll see I now have the installation application ready to go. Before we get to installing the log for OM2 software I need to make an observation. Most of the more experienced among us will know this already, but our newer hams may try to interpret the title of this software to mean log for old men. Experience, not old. This is kind of true, but it doesn't tell the whole story. In ham speak, and going back to the olden times with CW, when you wanted to abbreviate things as much as possible, the CW term OM was shortened from old man, which can be applied to any ham regardless of sex. By the way, YL means a young lady and refers to any female ham regardless of age, and XYL indicates a married YL or more specifically the wife of an OM. So now that we understand the origins of the term OM, you can actually see that log for old men actually means a log 
for ham radio operator. If you're enjoying this so far, please take a moment before we move on to installing the program to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. I say, how do you like it? We're going to start the installation application. We're going to select our language and there are several to choose from. And I'm going to select English. I do accept the agreement. You can take your time and read through it if you want. I want to select it to install the Omni rig and I want it to create a desktop shortcut. At this point, I'm ready to install. So I'm going to click install and it's going to install. You may get a Windows Defenders pop up. If you do, click on more information and then uh, select run anyways. The reason I do this is because I've got a good virus detection on here. And just as a reminder, I'll pop this up and show you that I am running from a secure website. Now there are some release notes that you'll want to review. And I'm going to click on finish. I'm going to deselect these two. And I'm going to close that and open it up from the shortcut. Double click on the shortcut, run through the installation, and we're ready to start entering information. OmniRig, or so I've been told, is a useful tool that makes connections between your computer and rigs more streamlined. But it is beyond the scope of this video. However, we will be looking at it in more detail in a future video. The program has a lot of features and as I do my research and develop my skills with more experience with this program, I will be releasing videos on a regular basis, each limited to one or two topics of discussion. Now, I would like to ask you to help spread the word about these videos by sharing I've got a secret for you with your fellow hams. Talk about them in your clubs over your morning coffee, and especially on any social media that you might frequent. When you first open up your LogProM, this screen will pop up. If it doesn't, perhaps you've already entered your information and it doesn't need it, or you've upgraded your license and changed your call, you've moved and have new information here. You can get back to it. I'm just going to exit out of here. If you come up here to Settings, Program Configuration, then select station information, it'll bring it up again. I've already populated this in order to save time with the video. When you get this and it's blank, the minimum information you want is indicated by these red stars. You need to put in your station call sign, the station country, which is from the pull down. So we enter that. This is automatically going to be populated. Station grid square is right here. Uh, station Grid Square is your Maidenhead location identifier. You should know this just like you know your phone number. And if you don't know it, I've put a link down in the video description to a website where it will help you identify your Maidenhead Grid Square. You do need to use the six character version. Now down here, operator call sign. If my wife is using this, I may put her call sign in here. The owner call sign is me. IARU region, which is also a red star, is region two. And you know that that is one, two, or three. We're in two, which includes the United States. Over here, I put my information and none of this has to, has to be entered, but I am going to enter my state here, it's pull down and I'm in Ohio. Once you have that done, you need to go to your user configuration here and select database. Now we're going to start a new database. Click on new and I'm going to pick my desktop ham radio log for OM. I'm going to enter a file name nd3n dash log. You can name this anything you want. It could be called Fred and Barney, George and Wilma, who cares? I'm going to save it and my database has been created successfully. Next, under the databases, you're going to have to go back to user configuration and you're going to come up with this here. Again, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it logbook. And you want to click on the green check mark, which makes your configuration active. I'm going to save everything and save and apply. 
Now, let me bring this out a little bit more. You can see here's my location right now. Here's my gray line map. And I'm going to go to, you can either click on F7 or click here. Since I know that most of you are going to be using this for SSB, this is from my logbook of the world. And the last time I did an SSB contact was way back in August of last year. But this is him. So we're going to use his information. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to enter his call sign, which was WN4AFP. I don't have an operator name. I did work him on the 40 meter band. So I'm going to select 40 meters. And I'm going to select that I was in lower sideband. And you see there's lots of selections there. CQ zone was 5, his ITU zone was 8, so we know all that stuff. I don't have a frequency, but that's fine. He was in grid EM84. I will be showing you how to import, import an ADI file, which would have all the proper information in it. But for now, just accept that this was just done, and we're going to come up here to this plus sign and save the QSO. So that is now in my log. Now I want to go to another one. And I'm going to go back to my logbook of the world. And let me expand this out just a bit. And I'm going to change this to any. And I'm going to say, show me, show me my most recent QSOs. So I'm doing that. And you'll see I'm using FT8. This time I'm going to click on my details just like I did before. We'll move this back. And I'm going to enter in this guy's call sign. You see, it, it did a little lookup. If you uh, are on any of the lookup sites, for instance, qrz.com, it will work for you. I was on 40 meters and my mode, FT8. I have CQ zone 4, ITU zone 8. And I don't have an exchange, so I'm not going to worry about that. I can come down here and say, show me the QSO map. This was where he was at, right there. And he is in EM84. So let's go ahead and add that. Grid was EM84. And let's go ahead and enter him. And you see, I now have him in my log. To summarize, we have downloaded the user manual and the installation program and we unzipped the software. We ran the unzipped installation application and along the way we installed OmniRig and had the installation put a shortcut button on our desktop. We then opened the log for om program, entered our initial data, entered our database data, and finally we made the first couple of QSO entries. At this time, I'm not sure what the subject of the next video will be, but I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I'm looking forward to putting it together. I would welcome your suggestions down in the comments. 73 until the next Hey Yell. As always, I am at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N. This has been a Ham Shack Chat, and I am out. I'll be back soon.